viewer broke his $300 motherboard and we're gonna try to fix it. So I recently did this with an RTX 3090 that a viewer sent in. It was overheating, so we replaced the thermal pads and then I asked the community, hey, can you send us your broken products? And that's when we got the message about this. Somebody's brand new Z690 motherboard that according to them, they bent the pins on and I'm gonna do my best to try to fix it. And in case you wanna send me in your broken stuff, I'm not a like repair magician or anything, but I do at least know the basics and repairing a CPU socket is something I've done many a times. So send me an email, ufdisciplemedia at gmail.com and we'll, we'll see what we can do. So first let's just examine the socket and see exactly what's going on here. I don't necessarily wanna make any assumptions. I can't really see. Oh, okay, maybe up here in the top right hand corner. Yeah, oh, especially from your angle, that is, that is way more pronounced than it is from my side. So yeah, we can definitely see that there are some bent pins. It doesn't look like we're missing any. It also looks like there might be some bent pins here. Oh, there's a lot. Oh, some over here. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm less confident about my ability to fix this now that I've looked at this board. <laughs> We're gonna see what exactly the behavior is upon boot. We'll put a 12th gen chip in here, see what happens, and then try to fix it. So we have an i5-12400F, that's gonna be our dummy chip. Oh, it doesn't even sit flush. It did not like fall in. Something's like propping it up. That's great, that's good stuff. All right, let's crunch that bad boy down. That's in there. Okay, before we put the GPU in, I just wanna see what the post lights are like. So we're just gonna jump in and see what happens. Fan spinned up. That's the fastest I've ever heard that thing go. There are no lights. There's nothing on this motherboard to help me diagnose anything. Now, let's see what happens with the GPU installed. Gotta flip the switch. That spins up heavy, GPU works though. So there is some communication. Now it's just a matter of what pops up on the screen here. So nothing happens, which is a pretty good benchmark to start from because that means anything we fix could potentially make something work. And it also means that I don't have the capacity to make it worse. It actually could like not spin up or anything. I could make this worse. I'm fully capable of making this all bad. Oh, stabbed myself. Off to a great start. But while I might have some skills to be able to repair a motherboard, in case you're looking for other skills, you should check out today's video sponsor, Skillshare. You won't find out how to repair a motherboard, but there's plenty of other stuff. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. You can invest in yourself and your personal growth. That's something that we chose to do when we took their class on indoor gardening, grow your house plants, veggies and herbs. In case you didn't notice in all of the UFD tech videos, we've actually got plants growing around here and we figured out how to keep them alive. Like this vine over there didn't used to be that long. And that's thanks to Skillshare. So whether you're interested in making a career pivot or leveling up your skills in your current role, Skillshare is a great resource for freelancers and entrepreneurs to help you learn new skills to support your growing side hustle or launch into a totally new career. Or if your day-to-day -day is filled with too many lists and tasks and to-dos, you could prioritize your self-care and your wellness by using Skillshare as a way to just invest in yourself, unwind and relax with classes like the Ultimate Self-Care Playbook or Plants at Home or Writing for Self-Discovery to help recenter you after a hectic week. And Skillshare is great because it's ad-free so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. There's new premium classes launched every week so there's always something new to discover and the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. And the first 1,000 people to click our link, which is in the video description, or by using my coupon code UFDTech at checkout, and we'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Again, check the link in the video description. You'll get a one month free trial. You can test it out, learn for yourself for free for a month, and then decide that you want to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself, get started with Skillshare today. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Was this overheating? It's not even warm. Like I clearly did not place this down properly, but like the CPU is not even hot. So in order to prevent more damage happening while we're working on it. I'm going to take off the retention brackets because I don't want to like accidentally slam those down while I'm in the middle of trying to fix things because I could see myself slipping my hand and knocking that straight into the socket again. So I bought a light specifically for this. It's a magnifying glass ring light that should give us a lot more visibility of what's going on on this motherboard right here. Oh yeah, that's glorious. So I'm gonna have plenty of visibility to be able to work with this because that's much bigger through this lens than it is in real life. So essentially, if you're trying to repair a motherboard, what you're gonna need are things that have very thin, fine edges that allow you to get underneath the pins that are bent, that allow you to kind of prop things up and situate it so that the pins 
pins are symmetrical because with the damage that's here, what's happening is these pins aren't making full contact with the metal contacts at the bottom of the CPU. And all of these pins typically have a specific functionality. Some of them are redundant. And so depending on which pin is broken on the motherboard might not actually affect anything at all. You could actually get rid of several of these and things would still work. But obviously in this case, that's not what's happening because there are so many that are damaged. So as I'm doing work on this, I'm actually seeing that there are plenty of places where I can fix some of these pins. So what's happening is that these pins look like they got knocked down by either the CPU or the CPU socket. And it's just as easy as kind of getting under one of the pins and just gently lifting it up so that it actually will make proper contact. And I kind of did it down in this area and then I fixed one up here. Uh, the area where I started, which was this guy over here, the reason this one looks so bad and I think is uh, what's gonna make this motherboard unsalvageable is the fact that that pin right there is missing its head. So it's just the bare metal sheet that's right there and not the ballpoint that makes contact with the CPU. So I'm not capable of soldering a ballpoint back on there in order to fix this. However, that doesn't mean that this motherboard is dead. It could be that that specific pin is redundant. And given the fact that there were so many areas that needed to be fixed, it could still actually work. There's only one way to find out and that's for me to finish my work and then test it. But the work of picking up the pins, making sure that they're aligning, that's essentially what motherboard repair comes down to when it comes to Intel's setup, which AMD is also going to be switching to this setup when they release their AM5 socket later this year. So this is gonna become a more normal problem because on AMD CPUs, that's where you actually have the pins and you can take something like a mechanical pencil head and apply that and fix it. In fact, I did that in a video where my son accidentally broke a CPU. You can check it out right up there. But now that AMD is gonna be switching, we might end up seeing more faulty motherboards than we did see faulty CPUs. And it might create a more difficult scenario for a lot of people. But I'm gonna keep trying to fix this and then we're gonna test and see if it works. But if it doesn't, I'm gonna say it's because that pin head specifically is missing. Because the way these motherboard setups are work, it's a flat sheet of metal that kind of springs up at the end with like a little ballpoint at the end. And it looks like that's what snapped off. But the entire spring mechanism is still there, but not one of the points that makes contact with the back of the CPU. So I think that at this point, I have fixed most of it the best that I can. And the one that I was worried was snapped off actually isn't. But because each of these like pins is such a thin sheet of metal, I might end up breaking it trying to fix it. So this one right here is the compromised one. And actually what I'm seeing happen, it's not that the head came off. Instead, the entire pin got folded backward. I can't even bend my wrist, like as if my fingers are touching my forearm right here. And I can see it's kind of making contact with another pin. So if I try to reset that, what's likely going to happen is that thin sheet of metal that the contact was made out of is going to snap, which is a huge worry. But the fact that it's making contact with other pins around it could actually be causing more of an interference problem than just losing that pin by itself. And there's really only one way to note. This is the last pin that I have to fix on this motherboard as far as what I can see everything else I think I've lined up nearly where it should be so this is the nerve racking parts so I just need to get under it I got under it oh I did it so the worst case scenario happens I definitely snapped off that pin with the slightest little nudge afterwards it just it completely came off but I do believe that I was able to get the surrounding pins more or less in line and I think that this is probably as good as I can do so it's time to put everything back together and see if it can work so now is a good time where I'd like to remind people that if you get an Intel motherboard upcoming AMD motherboard keep the cover to this because if your motherboard doesn't work and and you send it back to them and it doesn't have this socket cover on it and they see damage like this, they are not going to accept your return because they're going to say it was damaged when you didn't have this back on. It's a good thing to remember to keep your socket covers. Okay, I'm real nervous. I don't know. I have no idea if this is going to work or not, but I did. Oh, that fits way better than it did before. Before it didn't like fall in. So there's at least an improvement there. The good thing is the viewer did tell me that he just wanted to see if I could try. It's not a huge loss if it doesn't work. For the most 
part, you should probably send this back to the motherboard manufacturer so that they can try to fix it. Although sometimes that is untenable because CPU socket repairs are expensive. I mean, they tend not to be covered by warranty, but if you're outside the warranty period, then that can also create issues. Sometimes trying to fix it yourself is the right answer. Sometimes trying to get a professional to fix it's the right answer. And I'm not talking about me. I'm not the, the professional. I'm going to jump it. Let's see what happens. That fan's still going crazy. Okay, you know what would be an improvement though? If the CPU is warm to the touch, it is, holy crap, okay. So it's definitely providing some sort of heat setup. Well, we made progress, the CPU got hot, but it doesn't actually work and that's just the brakes. That's a phrase, right? Them's the something is a phrase. Them's the brakes, that's life. That's what it means. 